Next, I'm going to break down the loin. So we're taking a look at the loin, which consists of basically two sections here. We have our drop, and then we have our short loin. So here, I'm going to take off the flank first. So this is a nice lean piece of meat. It takes a marinade really well. I'll throw it right on the grill. I'm just peeling this away. All of these things just sit on top of membranes. These are actually really easy to take out because I'm peeling them away, and essentially I'm cleaning them. You're going to see there's not much I'm going to have to do to this afterwards because it just comes right out. And we have our flank, and it's all set to go. And then we can throw it right in the case if we needed to. So next I'm just going to cut off a little bit of the drop here, just to make it a little bit easier for me to see my sirloin flap. And I'm going to remove some of the fat too. So the sirloin flap is a great cut. It's called the bavette in France. It means bib. And it's going to look like a bib when we pull it out. This is actually a great cut that has a really nice grain structure, full of flavor, oftentimes it's great marbling, and it's easy just to throw right in the grill. And so I'm just going to peel that out. Cut off a little bit of the trim there. And we're left with our short loin now. So now I'm gonna pull out the rest of the suet. This is the internal fat that coats the kidney, protects some of these organs here. And this is great to render down to make tallow. You can use it for candles, uh, skincare products. We have a variety of people that buy them from us, but I think it's a great frying fat. Now we're going to pull the tenderloin. So the tenderloin is going to have a big head with two arrow barbs, and it's going to run through, and then it's going to taper all the way down to a thin tail. So here you're going to see me working both sides of it because it's so big that you're not going to be able to take off one side and then peel out the rest. So with this deboning process, I'm going to actually work one side first, work the other, and then meet somewhere in the middle. And then I'm pulling off a side muscle here, the psoas minor. So the tenderloin is the psoas major. This is the psoas minor. It's the chinette in French cooking. A little bit of tendons in there, but it's one of my favorite cuts. So now we have a strip loin. And so now I'm going to separate the loin section, which is where we're going to get our New York strip steaks or shell steaks because of the bone structure that goes around it. And we're going to have our sirloin bone in, and then we'll have our loin. Now I'm just pushing down using leverage, using the gravity, having a nice fulcrum point so I can dislocate the loin from the sirloin. So now we're going to take a look at the sirloin, which is actually one of my favorite cuts. I'm going to start deboning this. So this is an interesting bone because it's concave, so it really curves in, so you have to keep your knife ever turning towards the bone. So now I'm going to take out the ball tip here, so that's going to go to trim. That's a little bit of the sirloin tip that's left behind. And now we're going to take off the tri-tip, which is a really nice cut, very you know popularized in California. You'll hear it as the Newport steak. This is about a pound, pound and a half. It's excellent for grilling, throw around on the grill. Texas, they smoke them. And then now we have our top sirloin. So here's the breakdown of the loin. Now I'm going to cut these down even further into butcher shop ready cuts. So here we're going to hand cut some New York strip steaks. I'm going to go through the feather bones and then finish with my saw. I think that here there's really an obsession with tenderness and oftentimes people will be like, I want tenderloin specifically, or what's your most tender cut? And I think it's okay to chew and have interesting textures. There is nothing as tender as tenderloin. I've definitely cooked steaks that I felt were as tender as tenderloin, but I think that these days I'm really looking for more complex flavors, good textures, and you can find that anywhere on the animal. Here are the final cuts from the loin. This is what you'd see in the case at the butcher shop.